Okay, uh, today I made a, a video segment on the concept of rigid virtual part and its application in model analysis. This is a follow-up when I'm going to be doing rigid spring virtual part and its application in model analysis. So let me remind you what it, what, what was the problem that we did. Uh, we have a, a bar like that, a beam like that, which is clamped at the right end and is free at the other end. In the earlier video, I assumed that this gray piece, which is just about half of that, is much, much more rigid than uh, the the yellow the yellow portion of the bar. Okay. If that was the case, there would be no deformation, no stiffness. The stiffness is actually infinite. Okay. In this gray piece, uh, so we didn't model the gray piece except that we took its mass and we placed it at the centroid of this uh, uh, this rigid piece. Okay. That is where we use the rigid virtual part. So the stiffness of the thing that we are not modeling was not taken into consideration. However, that may not be the case. The stiffness of this, maybe Young's modulus or stiffness in general, can be either comparable to that or non-negligible. -neg Therefore, one cannot just simply uh, ignore the stiffness of it. And uh, this is where we replace the stiffness in the appropriate directions, axial, torsional, in different directions, uh, with what is called rigid spring virtual part. In other words, not only don't model the part, that's why we call it virtual, but you it's not quite rigid, it's a springy, let's say. We have to estimate somehow those uh, stiffnesses and, uh, uh, and uh, basically input it in the appropriate direction. So here's the problem that we're going to do. It's uh, very similar to what we did earlier, except that the bar entirely is 200 millimeter. And we decide that we're not going to model the, 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 the 100 millimeter on the left. Okay. So we're only going to model the 100 millimeter on the right. And this left one, we're going to leave it with, uh, 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 we're going to leave it as rigid spring. And of course, we have to estimate the, the, the stiffnesses. Now, <clears throat> Here is the note. One can no longer replace the left end 100 millimeter portion of the bar as rigid virtual part since the stiffness cannot be neglected. This is exactly what I said. And these have to be estimated and inputted in the rigid spring virtual part model. And uh, we're going to do it through elementary strength of material formulas because this is a very simple problem. But sometimes you may not have it, but you still don't want to model that piece, then maybe experimental result. Stiffnesses in different directions can be done experimentally and then input it into the uh, catheter. Okay, so once again, here is the 100 millimeter that we're going to model with 3D elements. This is the 100 millimeter we're not going to model it. However, we're going to create, we're going to make sure that its uh, its uh, uh, handle point is 50 millimeter away from the right end because if you're not going to model this thing, the mass of it we still have to include, and it's going to be at the centroid of the piece. So that's the mass has to go on the center uh, on the on the handle point. Therefore, we created at the appropriate location. Okay. Now uh, <clears throat> notice that when it comes to ignoring this piece, this gray piece, we have six stiffnesses that we are uh, ignoring. In other words, uh, uh, if we don't use uh, Rigid spring, okay. Uh, stiffnesses, transfer stiffnesses in direction, translational stiffness in direction x, y, z, and rotational stiffnesses about axis x, about axis y, axis z. Okay, those have to be calculated and uh, placed in, in the appropriate dialog box. Now, let me also remind you that the one that we already used is this rigid one. This is the rigid spring that we're going to be using. All right. Here are some uh, dimensions uh, that I'm going to be using for my model. Uh, I made a mistake initially in the earlier video. I thought uh, I meant 200 gigapascal. I wrote 2 GPA, except I corrected it in that video, so it's 200 gigapascal. These are properties of steel. Okay. Now, once again, uh, based on this density, the the mass of this yellow one, or the mass of the uh, the mass of the gray one that we ignore, which is exactly the same thing at the other end, is uh, 0.079. Okay, 0.079. Okay, 
let's uh, move on. Now, to show you how we use the strength of material formulas to calculate these stiffnesses, I put some coordinate system here. Now, first of all, a cantilever beam uh, of length L has uh, transverse deflection. This T, this T, see, it's a beam. This T represents translation in the direction Z and it's from strength of material 3EI over LQ. Now, <clears throat> when you look at the visual part that we did not model, I have six we have six stiffnesses three translation 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 in the direction z y x and rotation 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 about axis x y z now first of all as far as uh, translational stiffness is concerned it's the same formula except that the length of the beam the length of the beam is this piece this piece half of the total length because uh, you, the only way to convince you is to let you use for L, for L hat, L, and notice that the results are going to be completely out of whack, okay? Because when you think about it, the stiffnesses are only going to contribute if they are in this portion of the beam. The, the, the one to the left of the centroid, they, they go for a right. Okay, these are the uh, same thing as the one up there, except that the length is not uh, L, it's L hat, which is uh, 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter. These are rotational stiffnesses about uh, uh, trans, uh, rotational stiffnesses about uh, uh, axis uh, uh, x y z. Now the one about the axis x is torsional, so we're, got, we're not going to we're not going to assume there's any stiffness there. It really doesn't contribute that much to the problem anyway. So I'm not going to specify this. That's not assuming. Not specifying means that basically it's zero. <clears throat> okay. Now. Uh, uh, oh, uh, and this one, tra uh, the translational stiffness about direction X is really uh, the AE over L formula. It has axial deformation and therefore... Uh, now these two, the only reason we have, one reason that we have it here is that we're going to be using single degree of freedom model that I showed you earlier in the first video. I'm going to wanna, we're going to do that again. And these or these, these six are going to be inputted. These are for the virtual part. Remember, we are using virtual spring, uh, rigid spring virtual part. Therefore, these uh, can be specified, okay? Okay, here, right here. Rigid spring virtual part, you can specify up to six stif stiffnesses, three translation in the appropriate direction, and three rotations about the appropriate axis. Now, based on the numbers that I had, I calculated these values, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh, there happen to be, for example, uh, this is the actual one, direction X goes there. These are the bending about X, uh, about Y axis and Z axis that go here. Uh, this is uh, the torsional one that I'm assuming is zero. This really, if you change this thing, you see that it's not going to change that much. Uh, so it's not going to come into the picture that much. And then uh, rotational stiffness is right here, about, uh, about direction, about the axis Y and Z. Okay, good. Now, just a reminder that L hat in these formulas was half of the length of the beam, the active portion, basically. Now, here's the, uh, the single degree of freedom that I was talking about. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, let me see for a second, uh, we have... Uh, 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 stiffness in the direction Z, transverse to the direction Z due to the beam, and one due to the rigid spring from the previous page, and the effective one is just uh, these two springs, these two stiffnesses in series, that's in series, okay, and of course this was already discussed in the previous, uh, uh, previous uh, uh, video on rigid uh, virtual part, okay, and once again, remember L hat is half of the length. Now, some of the stuff can be found in the work of Ramon uh, Karga, Ramazoni Karga, in his master's thesis uh, recently, and also some are published in that, uh, uh, in that conference paper. Now I'm going to do the problem. Okay, uh, one last comment. Note, if the virtual part synthesis are calculated based on the entire length of the ignored portion, which means if you assume that L hat is actually 100 millimeter and included in Katia within the dialog box, the frequencies will be way out of whack, okay? 
only 50 millimeter of the length of the ignored piece will contribute to a translation or rotational stiffnesses. The last 50 millimeter uh, goes for a ride. Okay, we already discussed this. All right, so let me see for a second. Uh, where's the Katia? Katia is right here. We're going to create the model. So on that plane, I will sketch 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter cross section. Let's see, this is 10 millimeter, and this is 10. I'm going to change these things to 10. Exit. <coughs> Pad it by 100 millimeter. That will give us the yellow portion that we're going to be modeling. Let me change this thing. So you can see it. Okay. Then I'm going to create a handler point at uh, 150 millimeter from the very right end, right hand side, or 50 millimeter from this face. It doesn't matter. So I'll put down 150 millimeter. There's my handler point. Let's go ahead and apply the properties of uh, metal, steel. Those numbers associated with steel. Okay. You can check that too. Here's uh, double click on the steel, select the analysis tab. There is your 200 gigapascal that I was talking about, and there is a density of steel. These we're not going to be using at all. Okay, good. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, move to the analysis and simulation workbench. We are doing a frequency analysis. Uh, let's change the length of the, uh, the, the size of the element. First of all, the type is parabolic. The type is parabolic, length is 2 millimeter. Here is the actual mesh if you want to see it. There we are. The only reason I use such a fine mesh is because I don't want to have uh, the issue of uh, mesh, you know, being a factor in this analysis. Okay, good, good. Now, uh, clamp this end. All right, create a, not a rigid, see that? This was rigid that we used earlier in, in the other video. This is rigid spring, see? Rigid spring virtual part. It's going to ask you for the support. Here's the support. It's going to ask you for the handle point. A handle point, there's a handle, handle point. And these are the stiffnesses that we have to input. Now, uh, I think we already have uh, these. These are correct, three, three. And this one was actually a four uh, e to the eight. I think that was e to the eight. This is the actual stiffness. And this was four e to the six. Same thing here. Okay. Right. So we go uh, fine. Now, let me also remind you one more time. Uh, in, in this, if we left it like this, we're not only going to get transverse deflection, transverse vibration in the uh, X, uh, X, Z plane or along Z. We also get trans, 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 transverse vibration in the X, Y plane along Y. And... Uh, Etc. So axial vibration. If you want to, if you want to uh, weed out some of those, you can put a surface slider on this side, surface on the back side, so it only vibrates up and down. And uh, you know, some of the vibrations uh, frequencies are going to be taken out. But that's okay. I'll leave it like this. Uh, let's just check and see what did we get for this single degree of freedom approximation, 208. Okay, this was our estimate from uh, uh, second year vibration class. And, oh, structural mass, I forgot. Okay, there is a structural mass. Uh, there, there is a structural mass right there, distributed mass on that virtual part. And this number is correct because we already used it for the previous video. Okay, uh, now we're going to run it. I think we took care of everything. Yep, we took care of everything. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, 
So let's look at the deformation mode. This is the first one. And of course, if you animate it, you can see that it is in the Z direction. You can see that. We can speed it up just, just a bit. So uh, close that. Double click on it. And there you are. 211.9, 211.9. One of them is vertical up and down. The other one in the in the XY plane, which is exactly the same, same type. So uh, there we are. We have uh, 211, 212, which can be compared with uh, this guy. Very good result. Now, I urge you to try this problem without using the... Uh, without using the uh, uh, rigid spring okay uh, try to do it with uh, rigid for example you see that the numbers are going to be completely way out okay or if you use bad stiffnesses the ones that are just randomly selected for you maybe even zero stiffnesses see what happens as a matter of fact let's go ahead and you may make a quick run here so let's see now where is this uh, properties let me go there let me actually make these things zero 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 let me take these two away I mean these doesn't matter we just leave this thing uh, we'll see how it goes okay so let's run it and see how much it changes. Of course, it doesn't make sense because if you take those springs away, then you should take all of them. Uh, but I want to have an idea of uh, how much difference does that make. Well, it did make some change. Now let's go ahead and take the other one. Uh, some difference. Let's make this thing zero. And zero, and zero, and zero. Now, in this particular problem, this is a contrived problem, so maybe things will not show up as you uh, would anticipate in a re realistic problem. These stiffnesses are very important, and they have to be either calculated accurately or uh, uh, inputted through uh, doing some experimentation. Let's see now. There, you see that? If you uh, b use bad stiffnesses, apparently those bending stiffnesses are uh, are very critical. Uh, the, the the translational one didn't contribute that much. Uh, I think these will change. These these things, of course, will depend also what the length of this uh, piece that you're ignoring is. Okay, um, use bad stiffnesses, you're going to get garbage. You can see that. All right, folks, I hope that you found this thing useful, and uh, talk to you later.